In this screencast, I'd like to look at some properties of the vectors. Namely, I want to look at the magnitude, or length of a vector. I also want to look at the dot product and angles between vectors. So first, let's talk about the magnitude. If you want to find the magnitude of a vector, the symbols we use are we put bars around the vector. And whether you write the vector with uh, angled brackets or whether you use parentheses does not matter, just as long as you know the con from the context that you're working with the vector. So how do you find the length? Well, we use the Pythagorean theorem. If I draw the vector 1, 2, then really I can just use the Pythagorean theorem. One edge is length 1, one edge is length 2, so the Pythagorean theorem would say let's take the square root of the sum of the squares to find the length of the vector, hence giving us root 5 in this case. If you have some other vector, say it's in 3D, and that's ABC, and you want to find its length, well you take A and square it, you take B and square it, and you take C and square it, and then you take a square root. Really you're just generalizing the Pythagorean theorem. That's how we find length or magnitude in all directions. Some people also call this the norm. And so we've got three words, length, norm, and magnitude. Next we're going to look at the dot product. The dot product of two vectors is a way of multiplying the vectors to get a number. If I take the vector 1, 2 and the vector 3, 4 and I want to dot them together, then the idea is let's take 1 and times it by 3 and let's take 2 and times it by 4, and let's add the result. In some sense, it's like a linear combination. So this is 3 plus 8, or 11. The dot product generalizes to higher dimensions. And if you've got a vector u1, u2, u3, and a vector v1, v2, v3, and we're in 3D, and you want to dot them together, well then all you do is you take the first component here times the first component there the second component of the first plus the second component of the second, the third component of the third first, times the third component of the second. You can write it in summation notation. I'll just go i equals 1 to 3, ui, vi. And if you want to generalize to higher dimensions, you now go from 1 to n, ui, vi, and this is now the dot product of two vectors in all dimensions. What good is the dot product? It gives us length, for example, if you want to come back up to this example. If I take the vector ABC and dot it with itself, then I get A times A, A squared, plus B times B, B squared, plus C times C, C squared. Or, that's the length of the vector ABC squared. In other words, the dot product of a vector with itself is equal to the length of the vector squared. The dot product gives us lengths. The last quantity I want to look at is how the dot product gives angles. So the dot product gives angles. This is how we can actually define angles in higher dimensions, but the idea is that I'll take u dot v and it equals u v times the cosine of the angle between the vectors. This formula is described in the book, and I'll let you read it there. I'd just like to show you briefly how to use it. Suppose we have a vector, the vector is 1, 2, and I also have the vector 3, 1. How do I find the angle between those two vectors? Well, I've got the vector 1, 2, and the vector 3, 1. How do I find that angle? Well, this formula, if you solve for the cosine of theta, gives me a u dot v over the length of u, length of v. So really, I need to know, what is u dot v? Well, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 1 is 2, so that's 5. The length of u is, let's take 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2, 1 plus 4. I need the square root, so I've got a square root 5. I also need the length of v. The length of v is 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 1 times 1, which is 1, so that's root 10. I'll now put all of this back over into the formula. The cosine of the angle is precisely the dot product, 5, over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Well, that's 5 over the square root of 50, which is the same as 5 root 2. And so that's 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. Well, the only angle that has that as its cosine means that theta is pi fourths. 
that's an illustration of how you can use the dot product to find angles. One last thing I'd like to point out. Notice, if this is 0, then the only way to get the cosine of an angle to be 0 is if the angle is 90. So comment, the angle is pi halves or 90 if and only if the dot product is 0. That ends the screencast.